<laughs> what um, he wants to know, this is interesting, and Keith, why don't you help out on this? Alex wants to know what kind of information you're finding out, and, and I think probably this is a good time to talk about some of the experiments. Yeah, well, we've, Scott is here to, to climb Everest, but we are both, he's an MD and I'm a space biologist, so, you know, there's a lot of interesting environments here, and we talked to our astrobiology friends at, at NASA, and um, one of the things we're looking at here is the ultraviolet light, and although you probably can't see it from there, it's exceptionally bright here, and um, one of the things we're looking at is what's the levels of ultraviolet light are here. The reason being is that billions of years ago when life was originating on Earth, it had to contend with the fact there was no ozone layer, and therefore a lot of ultraviolet light was hitting these organisms. And there may be some organisms similar to those organisms back then alive today, but you have to go to the places where there's a lot of ultraviolet light. So we have some things that are kind of like a tricorder that they use in Star Trek. We put it at the sky, we measure the ultraviolet light, we then have some um, DNA samples that we put out, and we see what happens to them as the sunlight hits it. Um, Scott's also going to be climbing very, very high to a region known as the yellow band, or the orange band, depending on who you talk to, which is sedimentary rock that was once the part of an ocean, but as these mountains were lifted up, it's suddenly, you know, many tens of thousands of feet in the air. And there's fossils up there, we hope. And he's going to take a look at that. And as well, um, being a cold, dry place, there may be places where organisms live in these itty-bitty little greenhouses that are inside of rocks. And what that allows them to do is to survive over cold winters. And on the one or two days a year when they get perfect sunlight and water, they grow just a little bit. That may be what we are looking for when we go to Mars, which may be a dried-up planet. So this is a very interesting sort of laboratory to look at stuff uh, while Scott is having fun climbing. So we're trying to do science and exploration at the same time. All right, Michael has a question for, uh, this one is uh, for Scott primarily. Is it scary to climb the mountain? Uh, I, I would be lying to you if I, I told you that it wasn't scary, uh, but uh, I think you have to uh, be very focused when you go up. Uh, in particular, the Combo Icefall that you see here, it's a very treacherous thing, big blocks of ice and snow that can fall. Um, so you have to be very well prepared, very fit, so that you can travel through very quickly. Um, so I, I train very, very hard before coming here. Um, when I go up with my, my Sherpa friend, Danuru, who's... Superman, he's one of the strongest Sherpas on the mountain, very, very fast. Uh, I try and keep up with him as best I can. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I try and keep focused on the things that I can control. I can't help, I can't, um, I can't prevent an avalanche from coming down on me. It doesn't benefit me to, to dwell on that, but it does help me to dwell on trying to move quickly and being very technically proficient and uh, and accurate with uh, my crampons and, and things like that as I as I move through. So, uh, yes, it is a little bit scary. It, it's uh, very very thin air up there. Um, when we're up uh, towards the summit, we'll be using supplemental oxygen. Um, again, it's not a place where human beings can live for very long periods of time. So we're going to go up. Uh, we're going to try and tag the summit. Uh, take some uh, nice pictures and video and get down as quickly and as safely as we can. All right. So that, hopefully that answers your question. Kathleen has a pretty easy one. What are right. your two, what, Kathleen wants to know, what are your two Kathleen children's names? Luke is my son, who's 12, and Jenna is my daughter, who's 9. All and right. they, they've been following along on these videos, and they'll probably watch this one uh, in a few days as well. Excellent. Um, Marquise wants to know, um, what is it like to have these adventures? That's a, that's a pretty open-ended question, but, you know, and, and Scott, you can chime in, uh, excuse me, um, Keith, you can chime in on this one, too. What, what, these kinds of adventures, what do they mean to you? I'm sure. Well, for me, it's sort of, I don't know, I've, I've always been interested, I've, I've Although I don't rock climb anymore, I've done thousand foot cliffs and things like this, so I've sort of had some experience in that. I've been to Devon Island up in the Canadian Arctic three times, and you know it's interesting to be there with folks who are learning things for the first time, but also just going to places that are so so far away 
really sort of disconnects you from the everyday and lets you sort of stop and think about things. And yet, with these amazing tools that we're using right now, at the same time, we can be in immediate contact. So it allows you to sort of look at the world anew. And when I come home from something like this, I'll, I'll be pulling energy off of it for years to come. So it's part excitement. It's part, it's actually relaxation in some ways. And it's also part of venture. That's why I like doing it. That's good but answer. Scott, what, what do you got? Scott's going to be doing it. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Well, I think it's it's important to uh, be passionate about life, to live life to the fullest, and and uh, so you know that that's the way uh, I'm wired. My we're very adventurous. When I was growing up, we lived in uh, West Africa and the Middle East and Europe. So they were they loved traveling, and and uh, I learned at a very early age that some of life's greatest lessons uh, come outside of the textbooks. Not to downplay the importance of your textbooks, Marquis, but to, uh, um, also keeping your eyes open for other opportunities, meeting new people, going to different uh, places, and challenging yourself. And so, uh, you know, I, I love uh, love the outdoors, uh, the, the types of people that uh, um, uh, you meet outdoors are, you know, are kindred spirits to me. So that, uh, you know, just uh, kind of reinforced the, uh, um, the love of that environment. And... Uh, so I, I just feel very fortunate to have uh, had a, an upbringing that uh, opened my eyes to uh, a broader world, and uh, I've continued to expand that you know, personal world uh, through the years. Jared would like to know, Scott, what's more fun, going to space, climbing Mount Everest, or competing in luge? <laughs> well, luge is incredible. Uh, if, if you haven't heard of it, it's a, a Winter Olympic event on a sled. It's about the size of a cafeteria tray. Your feet are in front of you, your head is back, and you're racing down a, a, an ice track at speeds of almost 100 miles an hour, and you pull very high G's, G forces, so you're being squashed onto the, the cafeteria tray, uh, maybe five or six times your normal body weight, pressing you down on that sled and just blinding speeds. It's, it's incredible adrenaline. Um, I, I don't know that I can compare uh, you know, space flights to uh, uh, being here in the mountains. Uh, I, I hope to uh, be able to tell you what it's like to, uh, to stand on the summit of Mount Everest. I think it'll be a defining moment in my life if I can pull it off with a great team, including you know, Keith and uh, Denuru and, and you, Miles. You know, you've been a, a huge support. Um, but uh, you know they're they're all very uh, different types of uh, um, different types of experiences. Uh, space flight is uh, just uh, a, a pure joy. Um, the nice thing about space flight is to get to uh, your high altitude, you ride in a rocket ship, and it doesn't take a lot of energy. Climbing to Mount Everest uh, top takes a huge amount of energy and a lot of sweat. So <laughs> um, space flight is is definitely easier. Space flight is easy. Do. There you have it, Jared. All right, Krista wants to know this. Why did you choose to become an astronaut? Well, uh, good question. My, my father uh, worked on the Apollo program when I was very young. Uh, so I, I had model rockets and posters on the wall and, and uh, um, just grew up in an era when... Uh, you know, men were being uh, you know, prepared and actually sent to the moon, and it was a, a very exciting time. Um, thought that uh, maybe when I grew up, I would be uh, one of the first people to, to walk on Mars. The space program obviously took some, uh, took some turns along the way in uh, some very exciting ways, I would, I would add. Um, so I'd, I will not be uh, one of the, the ones that get a chance to, to walk on Mars, but uh, um, hopefully, you know, uh, you know, our words here from base camp, from Keith and I, that uh, you know, we can inspire young people to uh, to follow our footsteps, and, and maybe you can be the first person to, to walk on Mars. That would be nice. I'd like to be covering that from my um, uh, the rest home or something. All right, let's yeah. uh, 